Today we have this iPhone 13 Pro Max that won't turn on. It was sent to us from Albertville, Alabama. We're going to check it out. We already tried charging it and it won't charge. The first thing we do is remove the screws from the bottom and use this tool to remove the screen. We set the heat gun to 200 degrees, apply alcohol, and the screen starts to come off little by little. Now that it's loosened, we use the spudger to open the rest of the screen. We carefully detach the screen and now the phone is open. We're going to remove the metal bracket holding the screen and the battery. Now that we've disconnected the battery, we're going to connect the power supply. When we connect it, the power supply immediately jumps to 363 milliamps. This means we have a short on a main line. These main lines are responsible for carrying critical power throughout the motherboard, ensuring that essential components receive the necessary voltage to operate correctly. These main lines are those where a voltage is present as soon as we connect the battery. To fix this issue, we need to remove the motherboard. We take out the battery and remove all the screws to be able to take out the motherboard. We connect the motherboard to the power supply once more to see if any peripheral was the problem, but it's still drawing 365 milliamps. Now we're going to remove the stickers with alcohol and heat to prepare the motherboard for separation. This motherboard comes in two layers. The first thing we have to do is remove all the stickers so they don't burn with the preheater. There are stickers on both the back and front of the motherboard. Now, we're going to remove the 5G antenna. We go under the microscope, apply flux, and then apply solder on top of the antenna. After doing this and adding plenty of solder, we move it side to side until the solder under the antenna melts and we can separate the antenna from the board. Then we clean with alcohol. The next step is to place the motherboard on the preheater. We set our temperature to 220 degrees Celsius. Add solder paste on top of the NAND and press the OK button. Once the solder on the NAND melts, we know that the preheater has reached the temperature necessary to separate the two boards. Here it is, the solder has melted, meaning that the board has reached 220 degrees Celsius. Now we lift the upper board carefully, making sure the solder doesn't fall on any connectors. Now the two boards are separated. We remove them from the preheater, and the next step is to clean the thermal paste from the CPU on the upper board. Then we connect the top motherboard to the power supply to see if we still have a short. As you can see, it's still drawing power. This means the short is in the upper board. We set the lower board aside and place the upper motherboard under the thermal camera. As you can see, this area is heating up a lot, which means the short is likely here. We check the program and realize that the U4000 is the one heating up. We look online to find out what this circuit is, and it says this circuit is responsible for charging the battery. It's the charging IC. The U4000 charging IC plays a crucial role in managing the charging process of the phone. This component is responsible for controlling the power input from the charger at 5 volts and regulating it to 3.5 volts for battery charging to ensure it operates efficiently and safely. If there's a short in this IC, it can cause issues with the phone's charging capabilities or leave the phone with no power. Now we apply heat at 380 degrees Celsius and remove the IC. We connect the board to the power supply and there's no more power draw. This means the short is gone. Now I connect the screen and the power supply, and with my tweezers, I will power on the board. The board powers on. However, without the charging IC, it will not charge. Also, because we don't have the lower board connected, we will not get a signal, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi. Now we add flux to the traces and then apply low temperature solder paste to the soldering iron. Next, we go over the traces with the soldering iron. After this, we clean the solder on the traces with solder wick and the soldering iron until the traces are completely flat. Alternatively, if the soldering iron is not providing enough heat to clean the traces, we can apply heat with the heat gun at 315 degrees Celsius and clean the traces. Then, we clean the traces with alcohol. Now we add flux, align the new circuit, and apply heat at 380 degrees Celsius. 
Once the circuit is installed, we clean the residue from the flux on the board with alcohol. We connect the motherboard to the power supply to verify that we don't have any shorts. Now we are going to test the new charging IC. We connect the charging port to the board and plug in the charger. I set my multimeter to DC voltage and check the 5 volt USB line. According to the software, this component is connected to the line that provides the 5 volts from the charger to the charging IC. I test with the multimeter and it is giving us 5 volts. Now we check with the software where we can test the 3.5 volts that are coming out from the charging IC to the battery and it's telling me to test on these traces. We check the voltage and we are getting 3.5 volts. This means that the charging IC is working. Now I'm going to prepare the upper board and solder it back to the lower board. First, we add flux to the traces. Then apply low temperature solder with the micro pencil to facilitate cleaning. Next, we clean all the traces with the solder wick, being careful not to remove any components. Finally, we clean with alcohol. Now we repeat the process with the lower board. We place the board on the holder and then apply flux, followed by adding low temperature solder to all the traces. Next, we clean with the solder wick until everything is flat. It's important not to apply too much force when cleaning with the wick, as this can scratch the surface and potentially create bridges, resulting in a short circuit. Now we place the stencil on the motherboard, dry the low temperature solder with a cleaning cloth, and then fill in the holes with the spatula. After this, we secure the cover that holds the stencil in place and apply heat with the heat gun while holding down the stencil with tweezers to prevent it from lifting and spreading solder all over the place. Once the solder balls star forming, we add flux to expedite the process. Now that all the solder balls have formed, we remove the cover and the stencil and reflow the solder balls on the traces at 380 degrees Celsius. After this, we place the lower board on the preheater and apply flux to all the traces. Then, we align the upper board with the lower board. Next, we add low temperature solder to the NAND and set the preheater to 200 degrees Celsius. Press the OK button once the solder has melted and allow the motherboard to cool down. Now that the boards are together, we check one last time for shorts, just in case the solder balls are touching each other and creating shorts. First, we check for shorts on the primary lines. Then, we use tweezers to turn on the phone and verify with the current draw that there are no issues. Now that everything is working, we install the 5G antenna. To do this, we add flux on the motherboard. Next, we align the antenna and melt the solder that we had previously applied with the soldering iron to reattach the antenna to the motherboard. Once we are done with this, we check the pins on the antenna connector on the motherboard using diode mode on our multimeter to verify that the antenna is soldered properly. 
Now that we've verified that the readings are correct, we use the smart electric sharpening pen to polish the solder so that it is level and won't interfere once we put the board in the housing. Now all we have to do is reassemble the device and test all of the functions. Thank you for watching.